Hi, I'm Valerie Espinosa, your New Mexico Public Regulation Commissioner, trying to talk through my mask. And uh, um, we haven't done a program uh, since the election, but uh, I wanted to welcome back um, the audience to, to viewing. I'm not sure um, if this may be one of our last programs, but maybe not. If the college wants to continue them, we will. And uh, given the, the coronavirus, we've been uh, struggling with uh, meeting and meeting in person. So thank you, um, Iris Scott is with me today for coming to, from all thank the way you. from Abiquiu yes. to Santa Fe. Mm -hmm. And so um, if folks don't mind, uh, I'm going to take off my mask and uh, it's just the two of us. And so I, I'm hoping that everybody watching is safe at home and taking precautions like we all are to stay safe again. And uh, we hope this is over and done with soon because it's been uh, quite, a, quite a sad time uh, in a way. But it's also nice because during Corona, I think I got to meet you. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, since we all have uh, wide open spaces in, in Chama and the northern New Mexico yeah. area, yeah, we are lucky I that. got to uh, meet Iris Scott. And so the reason I wanted to have Iris here, it's a little different twist to the usual program we have, and that is because I wanted to talk about you and uh, tell the people all about you and, and your unique uh, way of, of art and your creations are just lovely. Thank you. And you as a person are just lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Valerie. Yeah, and, and yeah, I was going to say, yeah, let's we'll give each other a high five or an yeah. elbow or something. Yeah. But anyhow, she is uh, remarkable, a remarkable artist. Um, and she chose northern New Mexico to be her home. So I thought it would be nice uh, since Santa Fe is an artist town and uh, northern New Mexico mm -hmm. especially. Yes, I got the calling from this place. So, you know, let's talk about Iris. What, tell us how you ended up here and then we'll move on and show the audience your lovely okay. artwork. So, um, I grew up in um, a, a small town outside of Seattle, Washington. Uh, my parents were both uh, stay-at-home parents that worked with their hands. My dad's a cabinet maker and my mom's a piano teacher. And so I thought it was very normal to um, practice your craft and work at home. So um, later, after college, um, while I didn't expect to be a become a professional artist because I'd never seen anyone do that, um, I, I had assumed that I would become a teacher, a fourth grade teacher. I wanted to be a fourth grade teacher. And um, I still went to art school because I loved painting. So. Once college was done, I um, decided, you know, I better take a year off and um, paint before I jump into the adult world. So I... Um, Although you're very young. How old are yeah, you? so I'm 36. <laughs> so I was 26 when I decided to um, move to Taiwan for one year and live out of a backpack. Um, and paint. That was my plan, was just to paint and then once I came home after a year I would be a grown-up and I would get a job. Okay, So but once I got to Taiwan I was like wow this is very inexpensive living. My rent was a hundred dollars, a scooter was a dollar a day, food was a dollar a meal, um, and I realized that if I posted a painting for sale on Facebook for fifty dollars and sold it and use PayPal and FedEx to anywhere in the world that I was really living pretty high on the hog right. at $50 a painting. So I started just cranking out paintings. Um, at that point I was um, not a finger painting artist. That was just the beginning. But what happened is about a month into this little program of painting every day and selling online, for fifty dollars, roughly per painting, which I thought was like those are collectors now, I was right? Like, I was like, I'm in the money. <laughs> Good. I really now, where did. are those pictures now, and what are they worth? They're a worth, fortune. They're worth about five thousand each now. Oh they man. They were about this size, and um, yeah, a lot of them I gave away. <laughs> That's oh, another no. thing. Is, uh, I think that one of the misconceptions about um, making money in a sustainable way as a painter is that you need to price your work high. And what I found to be very true was that if you price your work low and let time sort of um, take care of the growth 
and the sustainability of raising prices and growing your collector base, that it's um, it's just a much more stable way of hmm. approaching the career. That's good advice. Yeah, and so um, I tell that to all artists I know now that um, if you are wondering what on earth to price your work, it is whatever is the price tag of what actually is making it sell right away on line and it might just be to your friends and family in the beginning that's how it was for me but what happens is their friends and family start to see these getting sold on your Facebook because you're announcing it as sold they're announcing that they just bought this cool painting and they're excited that they got a deal I mean people love a deal I love a deal I love a deal uh, of course you know <laughs> and and I think that there's just there's just so much I think there's a lot of misinformation about how to make a living as an artist and that is why we see so many artists starving is because they're not quite approaching their fine art um, in, a, in, a, in a respectful sort of craftsperson way um, and you know it's so weird but my advice to people that want to get to a point where they're selling art for a lot of money and, and it's a very stable career is actually you should start out by pricing it very low. Outstanding. What yeah. a story. How did you end up in, in New Mexico, in right. Abiquiu? Yeah. Because here's what my thought is of you and when I met you and your creativity and just your uniqueness. It's, I said, she's going to be the next Georgia O'Keeffe. What do you think about my <laughs> philosophy? Well, um, I, I think that I have had, the, as an artist, you go through waves of um, completely polar opposite beliefs about yourself. So in one minute I will say, I'll think to myself, your art sucks, you don't have a future, <laughs> what are you, you're an imposter. And then yet there will be this other voice that's like, no, you're actually a genius. You are the next Giorgio O'Keefe, you are the next Picasso. It is only a matter of time before all of your pieces are in all the museums. And it's this straight it goes back to that idea it's whichever wolf you want to feed is the one that grows and so I I I spent a lot of time trying to quiet the other one I don't I don't scroll too much on Instagram about other artists because it can be just so depressing and I really try to focus on those mantras about of positive self-talk and really self brainwashing oneself into the belief system that they are actually the genius that they really could be. Interesting. <laughs> I, I, that is a that's a great way to look at things. What's the name of that book? I, I mean, where you think and you become. Oh gosh, which one? Uh, there's I mean, so many. Yeah, I, I think that the Secret was a great book right, to read. Right there, you go. Yeah, and um, no, I really do believe in in magic, and um, I do think that the future is embedded in the present, and that you can sort of tap into it if you listen very carefully. You might hear your older self speaking to you. So before I showed this lovely uh, painting you brought with you, so where can somebody, if they wanted to purchase some of your work or find you online or in any particular gallery, how can they find you and research yeah, you? Yeah, well I'm they could Google um, Iris Scott or they could just Google finger painting. Uh, professional finger painting will get right to it. Um, you could also go on Instagram, Iris Scott Art, um, and my website is irisscottfineart.com. irisscottfineart.com. There you go. Um, so, are you pretty much? I mean, are there others that can finger paint, or you have Great that question. unique talent? Great question. There's actually been a lot of artists over history that have dabbled in finger painting. Um, Chuck Close is a, fam is a very famous contemporary artist who did some of it. Um, there really hasn't been an artist that's super has focused on it. And so 10 years ago when I Googled it, um, I was really shocked to discover there really wasn't an artist that was establishing themselves as that. So I very consciously said, off with the brushes, I'm going to focus on finger painting. And um, I visualized that if I did this hundreds of times, hundreds of paintings, a thousand paintings, I, f I knew that I could do stuff with it that had never been done. And um, it is important to sort of niche yourself as an artist and focus on either a technique, a certain technique, or a specific subject and just go very deep there. Because if you, if you keep dabbling in a lot of things, 
you will be sort of a beginner in a lot of things and not an expert in one. And so I, I do encourage like, you know, I've said this before, but um, maybe you're an artist that only paints with a credit card, you know, or only paints with a spoon. Or these are limitations that will open doors creatively because you will be the first artist that has done that many paintings with a spoon. It will inevitably do something new that we have not seen before. Interesting. So let's let's bring out this gorgeous portrait, and you can talk about it. Sure. It's not a portrait; it's a painting. Well, it's sort of a portrait. And I don't know if there's going to be a little bit of a glare, but you want to describe how you started this out and yeah. What are your thoughts? So this is a this is a hornbill. Um, it, gosh, I can't quite remember which country it lives in. I want to say South America, but I could be wrong about that. Um, no, it's India. This isn't. This is a bird from India, and I just kind of. It. I love kind of the outrageousness of um, the animal kingdom and how over the top and artistic they actually are making themselves. If you really think about it, they these females keep picking these more and more outrageous looking males, which is creating this this um, in, truly creative visual physically out of your being, you know, if you really think about that, their, their bodies are art. And um, so I really think of animals as very artistic minded creatures, especially the girls who are like, mm, not quite cute. That, now that <laughs> is very fine art to me. Um, so, you know, he's got, he's got just this wild red eye, you know, his, his beak and his crown are just insane. And for me, it really sort of um, looks like a royal portrait um, for a pretty royal character in my opinion and and then the background is just sort of this enhanced version of wallpaper so that's what this piece is about it's about look at me I'm so royal and beautiful yeah. his face especially and, and just how creative um, evolution really is well know? I was fortunate enough if you recall to watch you paint yeah that, that gorgeous picture with the fish yeah, and so I, I thought that was that was such an excitement yeah, for me. It cool. was so cool to be a part of that mm -hmm. and to to tell you what I thought. And yeah, you know, and I believe I did ask you yes um, for help. And and at first you were like, well, I don't know because you know, I mean, I'm not a I'm not a painter. I don't know if I have a right to do this. And I really feel that um, everyone, including the girl bird and the boy. Oh, it's a girl. This well, one? this is a boy. <laughs> I like this that. is a boy. <laughs> okay. Um, but I thought I called it a boy. Everybody has um, a sense of like what's not right, what's not look quite looking right, and they know that color looks better with that color next to it. And everyone is really a fantastic art critic. Um, and so I really do like to involve friends in um, pointing out like what's not quite working with a painting. What I'm color doing. would look yeah, good? Yeah. What do you think? Cool. Well, I, I also look forward to the time that my granddaughter is a sweet little artist and yeah. you can we can come see you and mm -hmm. you can give her a few lessons that would be great that sounds good to me so tell me um what brought you to new mexico okay so um i was living in new york for the past five years and um new york is i love new york new york is is it's a cement city to me ready <laughs> is very alive it's not it new mexico very it's very <laughs> wild um it is the complete opposite of this place and um, it was exactly what I needed at the time. It was important to me to go prove to myself that I could get a hug from the art world, really be accepted by um, the people that mattered there and then leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I wanted. <laughs> Just that was my goal and so once that happened, I left. And um, we, we thought about going to another city like Santa Fe, um, but in the end we decided that the best way to compete with New York was not to compete with New York and rather go in the opposite direction and choose a place like Coyote that's just so, so out there, um, so remote, so natural. And that's where we landed, which was um, just buying land. And, and building. You, you found a gorgeous piece of land yeah. that does exactly mm -hmm. look like George O'Keefe country yeah. and you can't imagine how mm -hmm. beautiful that area mm -hmm. is. And yeah and I can see George O'Keefe's um, uh, ghost ranch, I mean it wasn't her ghost ranch but I could see where she lived. Um, I can see that from my studio um, over the Chama River so that's very special and I like to absorb her magic 
coming nice. through the window. Nice. I can just see you on the back of a scooter. There's a painting of George O'Keefe in the back of a scooter. So one of these days, I expect <laughs> okay, to see you that's on very the specific. back of, of a scooter with your fiance. Uh, okay. Uh, and so um, anyway, we, we have a friend in common, uh, former uh, city councilor and mayor, Ron Russom. The best. And if it wasn't for him, we would have never met. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he's turned out to be a great guy, yes, I'm he sure, has. a great connection yes, in Chama. Yes, wonderful. And, and he's connecting me with a lot of builders and, and just brilliant people. So you can be an artist that runs for office someday. Oh, there we go. Yes. Figured and you're very, I, I appreciate that you're very political and you, yeah. you question, um, you know, the process and the people and, and you want to know who you're voting for. So that's mm -hmm. also pretty important. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, you're doing great. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with us about your artwork? Um, let's see. I, I, I think that when it comes to... Um, for people that are, are painting a lot and they feel like, what is the secret to getting into galleries? Like, what, what's holding me back? Um, it, it is it's actually quite simple how to um, turn art into a career. Um, the first thing to do is to uh, share everything online, um, is to paint constantly. It's to keep your prices low enough that they're getting out the door. You don't really need to be holding on to them. Um, let the market sort of bring your prices up over time. Only raise your prices when you run out of inventory. And then what, once you actually have a collector base that starts to push into that $1,000 and $2,000 mark, that's when the galleries are going to be like, hi. I want to meet you. Yes, they really they can't take a big chance on you. Um, they really need you in this new era to bring to them a client base. Um, it's just so much safer for them because it's so competitive for them. And so that's my advice to people. And um, make a lot of work. Just make tons of Do work. Do you spend a lot of time on your yeah, artwork? Yeah, yeah. I'm painting all, it's almost every day. Every day, yeah, most of the day, all night. All, if you, yeah. you continue whatever time it is. Yeah, I worked until 10.30 last night. And then here you are in Santa Fe, bright and early. Um, can you tell me about the Forbes Million Dollar One Person Business? Oh, sure, yes. Um, so basically, um, that was an article that came out in Forbes a couple years ago. And um, it, w it was basically about how to grow a art business. And um, that, w that number includes all of the prints. So um, prints are a great um, secondary um, component of the art career, but I really would, um, I would not worry too much about prints because they are so distracting and they can suck up lots of your time sort of managing the print business. Um, hmm. you, would you would be better off to get a, another person printing them and shipping them. You don't want to be in the printing and shipping business. Do you mean the posters? Yes, um, yeah. Don't get into the printing business. Um, I made that mistake. I probably lost a year or two just breaking even on trying to be running a print shop. Um, because sometimes that. printing is a lot cheaper for somebody that wants to have. Well, it's you know. way yeah, it's way cheaper and it's um, and it's wonderful. It's affordable, and but the thing is, it, it really does take a lot of time, and you need to be painting. So outsource that to something like iCanvas um, or Jackson Ray. Um, there are plenty of um, companies that will print and ship for you. All they need is a JPEG, and um, I would say that. It's just so important to be making videos of your work and uh, taking status shots of your work and having um, pictures and videos of yourself making the art and time lapses. Uh, we live in an increasingly digital world and people really need to see like how big is that piece in space. They just, just a one shot of it, they can't really tell how big it is and they really need to see how large it is compared to you. So. Um, that's my number one advice for building that social media. What about your um, very, very nice um, cards that you have? Those are oh, the, beautiful. Oh, and you probably created cards? this the slogan for them, right? I mean, actually, no, that's totally outsourced. So, oh, be darn. Yeah, I, that is just so much, it's so much work to actually um, make 
cards, package cards, process an order, take a phone call when someone is like, where are my cards? I ordered them a week ago, they're not here. Or my package came, it's damaged. Like, you just cannot be doing that kind of work. You really need to be in your studio working. So that is a company called Artists to Watch. And um, the, the more you grow your following on social media, the more these characters start knocking on your door and saying, hi, can we take care of your greeting cards for you? And just send you checks every oh, nice. quarter. That's yeah. nice, that and, and works. It's very important to um, not only declutter your life of stuff you don't need. I need to declutter, period. <laughs> declutter, I'll come over and help you. <laughs> okay. But also decluttering any sort of um, extraneous business like ventures okay that's not a healthy thing to be doing as an artist you really need to be making great work lots of it and posting it online and that's all you have time for you're right though we are living in a digital world yeah. especially uh, now in 2020 with corona and with everything yeah. else you know the broadband uh, capacity is getting going down quick yeah because uh, there's so many users yeah. but um so does that apply to your puzzles as well it's the company yeah. mm -hmm. if somebody that's wants another, a puzzle exactly that's another do company. you do well with the puzzles yeah i just get checks in the mail per quarter you know so there is actually a lot of money in art and um but you have to know how to simplify your life stop spending a bunch of money on things you don't need Get rid of stuff, and don't be distracted by all these other ideas of what you're going to do. That's Focus. me. That's me. <laughs> I think we all need Focus. Iris in our lives to help us focus I love and be in stuff. the now. Be in the now. Do the one thing you love to do and only that, and let other people take care of these other things, and let them be good at their thing. They're good at greeting cards. They're good at shipping. Go let them do that and just keep it cool and make good work. Interesting, so what's your next piece gonna be like? Ooh, my next piece, hmm. Well, let's see, I have, I have a pile of commissions I need to take care of first. Uh, first. And uh, once that's off my plate, um, I will be going back into these really large um, eight footers. Um, those are what wake, you know, really get me up in the morning. Your sweet animals that I've seen, <laughs> big, oh my yeah, gosh. Yeah, really big sort of um, over the top animal pieces is where my heart is at. And um, I think that's what's important is to build those museum sized pieces in order to get into museums. So that's my next thing. Project, so some of the commissions you've, um, you're working on, what are they, do they just tell you, this is what I want, oh, and you yeah, work on good it? question. So I would say about 30% um, of my overall um, work is a commission, which is quite common. Many of uh, the artists of, in art, we, we know of in art history, a lot of their famous pieces were even commissions. Um, they just did them so well that they, hmm. the, the truth is, when it comes to commissions, um, it's a double-edged sword. You want to be careful um, to not take a commission that doesn't make your heart sing. So what I do is I let them tell me the size of the painting and the general subject, and then I run with it, and then they get the first dibs. It, they're not obligated. So it, everybody's free. So more or less, how much are, are the prices? So for you know a small one, mm -hmm. medium, one mm -hmm. like this, yeah. and the biggest one you've ever made right. sells for? Yeah, so the very big pieces sell for 50,000. The very small pieces sell for about 5,000. This is, this is about six and a half. And um, everything in between sort of drops in the 10,000 range. Well, what a remarkable story. I can't, I uh, just, I'm thrilled and honored to Thank know you. you. Thank and, you. And uh, I look forward to, to spending time with you and seeing you, taking my granddaughter to visit yeah, you. But I please. also wish you the best of, of the best of the world has to offer you. And welcome to New Mexico. I love New Mexico. And we're not going to let you leave from New Mexico. I'm never, I want to die here. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, so do you have any last closing remarks? This mm -hmm. half hour flew by. And is there anything you'd yes, like to I tell Santa Fe? Yes, I do have closing remarks. Um, the future is bright. Everything is going to be OK, um, especially when you look at evolution. Uh, when bad things happen, it's like always a catalyst for evolution and growth. In fact, they say that in nature, animals evolve the fastest, 
when a catastrophe hits. So we are in a lucky period and it's going to be okay. You think so yes. and I believe so too. Yes, that's so. what I would say. I told you all she was remarkable. <laughs> there you have it. If you'd like to appear on my TV program, please give me a call at 505-670-7159. I want to take this time also to thank the college and Doreen and all the staff thank there. Um, why can I never remember? Not Marshall, because Marshall's been gone a while, but our other buddy, um, George. George, uh, thank you for, for hosting this program and um, We've been doing this for almost 20 years. I hope we can continue to, to do this when COVID goes away or even if it doesn't yeah, like today. So uh, just continue to be safe and be kind and thank you all.